Hi, folks. So uh, you could argue that I conspired this entire thing with Bertha so I could make a video called Decapitating Bertha. But we are now going to decapitate Bertha. We're going to yank uh, I I was always a 98-pound uh, weakling, and my upper body strength certainly hasn't improved with age. So uh, these days, when I yank off a head, I just use a pulzol, which is lag bolted into uh, one of the beams in the ceiling. This head is not heavy, but I am not strong. <laughs> so here we go. And this just makes it really easy on my back. Now I can just swing it over. And I can grab it without having to lean over and kill my back. If you just give me one second, I'm going to put the phone down and uh, unhook the pulls all, and then we can have a look at this valve, which was the whole idea. Just a minute. So I have the head off and upside down, and this is number one cylinder, which was the one with the intake valve that would not seal. And boy, it doesn't look obviously foobard to me. It's very odd. Let's look at the engine. Get some light on this. Look at those 10 to 1 pistons. Well, I don't see any evidence of contact. Very strange. All right, I'm going to have to look into this a little bit more. There was absolutely no question that number one had low compression, like 25, and that when I did the leak down test um, that all of the compression was escaping through the intake valve. Very odd. I will report back later. Rob out.